we're starting our discussion of chapter six, which is the analysis of independent two group data. So we've been looking at scenarios where we had two variables that were the same type. Chapter four had two categorical variables. Chapter five had two quantitative variables. Now we're looking at a scenario where you have essentially one categorical and one quantitative. So the categorical variable will group the two different populations. So your categorical variable will signify what group it's from, and then a quantitative variable will be used so we can compare means. Now, independent group data can come from either observational studies or designed experiments. And it's called independent because we expect that one group's measurements are not going to impact or affect another group's measurements. So we're comparing two separate groups that are categorized by the group they're in, and then we'll be comparing two means for those groups. There are a variety of ways for you to collect independent two-group data. One way is to take two separate random samples from two separate populations. So for example, I could be interested in the time to run a mile, and I want to be able to compare average time to run a mile, well, I could have two separate random samples from two separate populations. So perhaps I would choose a population from or use the population of GBSU students and take a random sample from that group and then compare it to the population of Saginaw Valley students where I took a random sample from that group. So again, it's independent because I wouldn't expect the time to run a mile for GBSU students to affect students at Saginaw Valley. That's one way you could collect two independent group data. Another way that you could collect two independent group data is to actually take a random sample from a whole population and then divide the sample into two separate groups based on some categorical variable. Now this scenario would only be able to be an observational study because we are asking people about that categorical variable and separating them into those groups. So for example, I could take a random sample from the population of GBSU students, and if I was still interested in time to run a mile, perhaps I would separate males and females. So I would be just observing time to run a mile for males versus females. So it's from one population initially, but then we're separating them into the groups males versus females. Again, it's independent because I wouldn't expect females' time to run a mile to affect that of males. Another way you could collect independent two-group data is by actually assigning participants to different groups. So this, because you're doing the assigning, would be called as a designed experiment. Now, if you're performing a designed experiment or an experiment in general, remember you're affecting people, so you're doing something to them. So perhaps I took a sample from the GBSU student body and then I randomly assigned them to different types of shoes. So maybe I assigned my first group randomly to Nikes and my second group I randomly assigned them to New Balances and then I compared times to run a mile. So there, again, it's independent because I wouldn't expect people wearing Nike shoes to affect the times of people wearing New Balance shoes. Now finally, something to consider when you're thinking about independent two group data is because they are two separate groups, each of them will have their own measurements. So they'll each have their own population mean. And remember that mean we denote with mu. So to signify which is the group one and which is group two or the different populations, we'll add subscripts. So we'll have mu sub one, mu sub two, and each will have their own population standard deviation. So sigma sub one and sigma sub two, each will have their own sample mean. So x bar sub one, x bar sub two, each will have their own sample standard deviation. So s sub one, s sub two, and then finally, each will have their own sample size, n sub 1 and n sub 2. So because they're separate, unique populations or groups, they'll have their own corresponding measurements. And again, it's independent data because we wouldn't expect the two groups to affect each other. So as we continue in this chapter, we'll talk about ways to graphically describe or compare two groups. And then we'll talk about the forms of inference for comparing these two groups.
so we'll be comparing them through confidence intervals and hypothesis testing.